Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. My name is Lysentric Leroy Pearson of Greater St. Paul AME Church, where our pastor is Dr. Reverend Toby H. Pollock. And this morning, I'll be coming at you all with, with church school lesson, lesson number 11, November the 15th, 2020. November the 15, 2020. And our lesson for today is Confident Love. Confident Love. And we look at the word confident. And confident meaning having strong belief or fully assured. Sure. So this is called confident love. Being sure. That we are loving like we should. Being sure that we are doing what God commands us to do. Being sure and not thinking, well, I wonder if this is the way God would do it. Being sure, being having that connection with God. And when we look at the lesson scripture, it comes from 1 John 3, 11 through 24. 2 John 4 through 11. And 3 John 5 through 8. And the focus scripture is First John 3 through e, 3, 11 through 24. And when we look at this here, John the disciple, John the disciple, and he wrote four books. John, John the first John, second John, third John, and the book of Revelation. And when we look at the book of John, 1 John, 2 John, and 3 John, it's talking about love. It's talking about what God commands us of us, how to love, not love because the love is love in spite of. Love like Jesus loved us. And when we get into the lesson and see what does says the Lord, understanding, being confident in love, knowing what God commands of us in loving his children, loving his people. Some people say people are difficult to love. You don't think we were difficult to love, but Jesus still loved us. He still cared for us. He still came and saw about us. We are all not the same. We are not all on the same level as one another. So we have to be patient with people. We have to understand when God said the poor will be, still be among us. We have to realize that people are not going to follow God. Even as Christians, some of them still falls to the wayside. So we still have to love them. We still have to do what we can to help them. And if we jump into this year, listen this morning to see what does says the Lord. And understanding that what John was teaching and telling them about Jesus. Do what Jesus said do. And they, they said this is the one that God Jesus loved so much, John. And we look at 1 John 3, 11 through 24. Excuse me, key verse. All who obey his commandment abide in him, abide, stay connected, and be abide in them. He will abide in them. I mean, Jesus will work through us. As long as we stay connected to Jesus, Jesus is going to work through us because he sent the Holy Spirit to be with us so we can tend to abide and stay connected and do what he said to do. And by this, we know that we, that we know that he abides in us by the spirit that he has given us. 1 John 3, 24. As long as we do what God commands us to do, love like he wants us to love, treat our neighbor as we want to be treated. Not we treat them one way and expect for them to treat us another way. Treat them good. Treat them nice. No matter what. Love. Love. And we open up this year's church school with a prayer this morning. We jump in to see what does says the Lord. The Holy Spirit used me this morning. Father God, here we come looking at you, Lord God. We just want to say thank you, Father God. Thank you for another day of journey. Thank you for how you have kept us, Father God, through a week's Father God journey, Father God. It hasn't been easy for some people, Father God, but we thank you this morning, Father God, for loving us through the midst of all our ups and downs, our trials and tribulations. We thank you this morning, Father God, for being the God of our life. Father God, if we continue to press on through this year, 
Listen, Father God, confident love, Father God. Knowing, Father God, what you command of us, Father God, we ask that you would open our hearts, mind, and soul to receive your word. Father God, we ask that you would touch right now the sick and the shed and touch the bereaved family, Father God. Just move in people's life right now, Father God. For we need you, Lord God. Oh, we need you in the midst of all that's going on in this world. We thank you, we love you, and we need you. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Lord, we thank you. First John three eleven through twenty four, NRSV, and four and verse eleven, for this is the message you have heard from the beginning that we should love one another. Ever since Jesus started teaching and preaching, he was teaching and preaching about love, loving your brothers, loving your sister, loving your neighbor, love. It goes all the way to the Old Testament when God sent down the commandment through Moses. Love thy, love your neighbor as thyself. This is the first and great commandment. The second is light on there, but the first one is to say, love God. Love God in the midst of all. Love God. We must not be like Cain who was from the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own deeds had evil and his brother righteousness. And when we look at Cain and Abel, Cain murdered Abel because of the gift. God accepted Abel's gift and he rejected Cain's gift. And Cain could not stand that God rejected his gift. So he ended up killing his brother for jealousy, anger. And that's why we have to control what goes on inside us. That's why he said, love our brother. How can you say you love your brother and you're saying you kill them? Where is the love there? Where is the ambition there? That's why when growing up, our parents taught us, love one another in spite of. Because we all are not going to do what we're supposed to do. So we continue to have to love them, do for them, cherish them, treat them right. We can't just them. Well, he ain't go up the mountain or nothing. He ain't gonna be no good. Just throw him to the side, man. He, I ain't got time for. Mm -mm, you can't be like that. If you got the love of Christ in you, you gonna continue to do what God commands you to do. You gonna continue to go after your brother to try to help him, your brother, your sister, and try to help them as much as you can. Help them to grow. Anybody that you see out there on the street, you you got to look beyond what you see, and ask God. God, what do you want me to do in this situation? How do you want me to move in this situation? Because that is one of my brothers. That is one of my sisters. And do what God commands you to do. Do not be astonished, brothers and sisters, that the world hates you. Don't be ashamed because the world hates you because you are a Christian. Because so many times, they're looking for us to be perfect. We are not perfect. We are human beings saved by the grace of God. We fall short each and every day with God's grace and mercy that he has stowed upon us, makes us righteous with him. Because we go back and we say, Lord, forgive us of all our shortcomings. Forgive us of our sin. Forgive us of why we treated our brother wrong. We're not perfect. We are human beings. But in the midst of all that we have in us, we have love. We have Jesus Christ. We are saved by the grace of God. So we have to continue to press on, doing what God commands us to do. We know that we have passed through death of life because we love one another. Whoever does not love abide in death. If you have hatred, and anger, and bitterness in your heart for your brother man, you are in death. You're not abiding God. You're not connected to God. You're connected to death. So that's why God is, God is talking to us today, telling us, be confident in our love when we love in our brothers and sisters. Do not have hate. Do not have anger. Do not have bitterness against your brothers and sisters. Continue to do what thus says the Lord and love one another as Jesus loved us. And John wanted us to get this right because when John Wright wrote these um books here, he was thinking about love. And most of all, he saw where 
this had creeped into the churches. It wasn't no love in the churches. Everybody was coming in with false teaching, doing what they want to do, not abiding in Jesus' love, not abiding in Jesus' word, but doing what they wanted to do. So that's why these scriptures were written, because he want us to know how to love, understand why we love and why we're doing the things that we are doing. All who hate his brothers or sisters are murdered, and you know that the murderer do not have eternal life abiding in them. All the hates is, all who hates a brother or sister are murdered. Don't hate nobody. No matter how they do you, how they treat you, how they ridicule you, how they slatternize your name, continue to have love for. When you, I know you sitting looking at it, it's easy said than done. You're right. But when you have the love of Christ in you, that makes it a whole lot easier. That helps you, makes it a whole lot worth it, giving what God tells you to give. If he tell you to go to your enemy and give him $10,000, you go to your enemy and you give him that $10,000. But in, I know in your, as a human being, it's going to hurt you. But you're doing what God commands you to do. you living out of love. you living out of knowing that God is moving in your life in a way that you're going to trust him to do the right thing. That you're going to trust him to do what he tells you to do. So have love and happiness for your brothers and sisters. Don't have death. Don't be murderous. Love them. We know love by this, that we are laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our life for one another. And we look at Jesus, he laid down his life for us. 2,020 years ago, he went to that old rugged cross. Thinking about us 2,000 years later, knowing that we were going to need the Holy Spirit to dwell in us, to teach us to love like he loved. Teaching us to do what he commands us to do. So that's why we have to keep the love in us. That's why we have to... No word but the world. Because like you say the world will hate us regardless of the fact. Continue to do what God commands us to do. Continue to look beyond man and see Jesus in everything that we do. But we thank God this morning for his love. How does God love abide in anyone who has the world good and see a brother or sister in need and yet refuse to help? Mm. And we look at that verse 17, how does God love abide in anyone who has the worldly good and see a brother or sister in need and yet refuse to help? That's why we have to examine ourselves each and every day. That's why we have to kill this flesh each and every day so we can live for God. Not for this world, not for man, but for God. Doing what God commands us to do. Understanding why he sent these commandments. We have to abide in him. Because you see so many people that are well off, but they refuse to help. They refuse to help. You got people with billions and billions of dollars. More money than they're spending 10 lifetimes. But they refuse to help. They refuse to do what they need to do. All that is in, I want more, give me more, give me more, give me more. But we have to understand what God said. The last will be first and the first will be last. So let's continue to do what, what little bit we have that God has given us to share. To share with our brothers and sisters. To help our fellow man to do what does says the Lord. Little children. Let us love in not word or speech, but in truth and action. Don't speak that I love you and I, I adore you and I'm this. Show it by action. Show it by doing what does says the Lord. Show it by going out, helping your fellow man. If you see your fellow man is down, help him. If you see they're falling by the way, it's not help them because there's so many people that are connected to Christ and say they are saved, but in being saved, they're not doing what God does says the Lord. They don't have that full relationship with God. They don't pray and ask God, what do you want me to do or have me to do in this situation? They just go and do and look for God to bail them out. But we have to still love them in spite of. Even when we lend them money, and it comes back and asks us again. 
You can't worry about what you did before because God has blessed you for that already, believe it or not. And a lot of times it's not in money. It might be in your good health. It might be keeping you from accident. It might be helping you from getting wrong. It's a lot that God blesses us besides with money. He blesses us with a whole lot more. So that's why we can't just look for monetary gifts. We have to look beyond what our eyes see. So we thank God for his blessings. And by this, we all know that we are from the truth and we'll reassure our hearts before him. We doing the right thing. We know we connected to God. We ain't got to worry about we connect or we do. If you doing what does says the Lord, when you feel that burning inside you, you know that you're doing what God commands you to do. Whenever our heart condemns us, for God is greater than our heart, we know everything. Know everything. Listen to the inner voice in you. God's going to speak to you. He's going to let you know. He's going to tell you what he wants you to do. He's going to show you what he wants you to do. So don't sit and wonder, well, I wonder if this is what God meant for me to do. You know, once you got that relationship with God, you will understand what he is telling you, why he is telling you, and what he wants you to do. Because with John teaching these lessons on love, we have to have that full relationship with God. We don't have to wonder, do we, did God that you talk? You know that's God talking and moving in your life and having you do the right thing. Beloved, if, beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God. Is your heart to condemn you, but you're doing the wrong thing? You know you're doing the right thing. Because God's going to let you know that wasn't right. God's going to speak to you that wasn't right. So continue to do what thus says the Lord. And we, re and we receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandment and do whatever pleases him. But remember when we, and we receive from him whatever we ask. Whatever we ask according to his will, not our will, but his will. Doing what he does says the Lord. We can't go to God and ask God for things in our heart isn't right. Because he knows us. He made us. He knows what resides in us. You go and ask to be a millionaire and your mindset ain't set for a millionaire. He's not going to give you that because he knows you can't handle that. So that's why I always say, ask for the things that you know. Know that God is going to give you what he's going to bless you with, what he's continuing to show and give you. Because a lot of people can't handle what God really, truly want to give you. He's trying to mature you, but we stand as baby on milk, not moving up the solid food. So that's why we have to continue to grow in Christ, to know, okay, God, I can ask you for this because I know I have matured enough to handle what you're going to give me, what you're going to do in my life. So that's why we have to be mindful. That's why we need to ask in his name and it will be given. But recognize what you're asking for. And this is this commandment that we shall believe in the name of the Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he had commanded us. Believe in Jesus because Jesus first loved us. If you know God loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son and whosoever believe in him shall not dare to have eternal life. So that's why we have to believe in God. That's why we have to believe in Jesus Christ because God gave us his death. He didn't think about it. He sent him onto this cruel world and the world hated him from the day one. They wanted to kill him. Herod told the, the, told the Magi to go out to find the baby Jesus and come back and let him know where he's at so he can go and worship him. But in the back of his mind, he was saying, let me go and kill him. But God sent him to send the Magi some, another way. So that's why we have to be careful of what we say. And don't kill people with our mouth. Because we can kill people with our mouth. Continue to love and do what thus says the Lord. All who obey his command abides in him. And he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit that he has given us. 
Do God command. Keep God commandment. Love like only God commands us to love. Love in spite of. Love because of. Love because God loved us. We wasn't always easy to love, but he continued to love us. So we can continue to do what thus says the Lord. Going out, teaching the right way, teaching Christ, teaching the Bible, letting people know what thus says the Bible. If you don't understand, find somebody to talk to and say, explain this to me about what this passage means. What do God require of me? How do I go out and love like Jesus loved? We have to look beyond what's in front of us and see the good that God has put in them. There's always good in somebody. A lot of times as Christians, we definitely don't do what we're supposed to do. We just find non-Christian to help us quicker than Christians would. That isn't godly like. That isn't living for God. That isn't confidence love. We have to be sure what we're doing lines up with God's word. And as we today look at the introduction and life application and the um, devotion prayer as we close, the author of today's scripture is John, the son of Zebedee. Zebedee. John is the author of 1, 2, and 3 John. 1, 2, and 3 John. And the Gospel of John and the Book of Revelation, as I said earlier, this is what John wrote. A member of Jesus in a circle. John is also referred to as the disciple whom Jesus loved. John thirteen and twenty three. John was the longest surviving apostle, and therefore the last, the last with eyewitness account Jesus' life and early ministry, abolishing. Christian in Asia Minor to be confident and self-assured about the gospel to which they had been converted with converted. Was John purpose in writing that writing what is known as the la as excuse me, the love letter. The love letter compiled three books, one, two, and three. John was serious concern about the infliction of the Nazi. Therefore, John wrote the letter to reassure believers. He want believers to remain confident in the teaching and faith foundation that brought them to believe in Jesus Christ and salvation. John 3.16 capitalized those beliefs. So that's why John wrote these books. He wrote, more, he wrote letters of love, letting us know what we, God commands of us and what God wants us to do and how God wants us to live. And if we look at the life application, as with our previous section, today's scripture points to the need for action. Action, liberating faith. That is fueled by love. Jesus modeled the highest demonstration of love and commandment, command us. To love in the same way. Love the same way Jesus loved. Love this way is neither easy nor normal for humankind. Even as babies, selfish is present and easy detect detectable. Selfishness changed only through accepting and aligned to the gospel. As we submit to our sovereign God, conversions lead us to leads to. I will become a new creature in Christ Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. And abolishing, in, abolishing into God's family. Adopted, excuse me, into God's family. The transformation is a lifelong process directed by God to shape us into becoming more and more like Jesus Christ. What would Jesus do? John's message to the church in Asia Minor are equal as relevant to us today. It is imperative that we know what we believe and why we believe, and we do. With modern technology and increased diversity, we are bombarded with many unoxidized teaching about salvation. Although we might find many to be appearing, 
It is essence that we determine whether they are consistent with the gospel message changing, but neither God nor God's word will change. Many other scripture about supposed John message. The following by the Apostle Paul is one example. Keep alert, stand firm in your faith. Be encouraged, be courageous, be strong. Let everything you do be done in love. 1 Corinthians 16, 13, and 14. Amen. Lord, we thank you, we thank you. And as we close with this prayer here, Lord, thank you for your patience and kindness with us. Thank you for forgiving our sins and transgression. Please bless us to forgive and love as you do. We pray for discerning spirit that will enable us to know your truth. In the name of Jesus, we pray. I thank you all for allowing me to come into your house this morning with this church school lesson. Confidence in love. Knowing that God is working through us and having us do the right thing. Having us align up with God. We thank you. We love you. Have a blessed and prosperous day and week. Amen.